Let's do the VOR1 approach into Talkeetna via Erto. So let's pull up the plate and take a look at it really quickly. We're going to be south, way south of Talkeetna, somewhere around here. And the idea is we're going to go to Erto, do the arc, and come in. So first of all, let's, let's look at it, and then I will show you how I would brief it as well. So the idea is we're somewhere south. We're going to fly towards Erto and intercept Erto on the 156 radial, 14 DME, away from the Talking of UR. And then we're going to arc on the 14 DME. And if we do the arc from Erto, it says no PT, so there's no procedure turn. And we have to be at 2,500 feet or so. And then we can start our descent from there down to Hislo, which is 3.9 DME away from the VOR. And from his low, uh, 352 heading inbound to the VOR, then we're going to cross the VOR and continue in. So the VOR is going to switch um, with the flag going to the VOR and then from the VOR and then to the runway. So we're going towards the runway there. So if we look at it from the profile point of view, what's happening is we're going to come in at 2,500 feet or above. Descend down to 2,000 feet over his low. That's 3.9 DME. At 2,000 feet, we know that's the final approach fix. At his low, because there's the Maltese cross, we're going to descend down towards the VOR. We're going to cross the VOR and then go another 1.2 miles away from that VOR. And that's where the runway is, is 1.2 miles away from the VOR. We're category A aircraft because we're approaching in under 90 knots. Um, so our... Um, approach altitude is a thousand feet, thousand forty feet with one mile visibility required. That's going to put us six hundred and seventy seven feet above the ground. So our altimeter will say a thousand forty. The altitude above the ground is six hundred and seventy seven feet. So, you know, you'd read this beforehand, uh, before you'd sh uh, shoot the approach. So we'd make sure that, you know, we have all our. Um, frequencies put up we'll just check anything that we require we need a dme for this approach there are some takeoff and alternate requirements so you'd want to read that before you choose this as an alternate and if you're taking off from here you want to make sure you understand the takeoff minimum changes there uh, you can't circle east of runway one uh, or one nine so you're going to circle west uh, runway one visibility reduction below one statute mile is not applicable can't use it for that Straight in runway 1, not applicable at night. Circling runway 1, not applicable at night. So um, those are things to keep in mind there. So our missed approach as well is climbing to 2,100 feet on the Takina VOR, then climbing left turn to 3,200 feet direct to the Takina VOR and hold over there. So that's the basic approach there, and we're, we're going to brief it again when we do the whole um, process. So let's get back into the airplane. I'm south of Takina. What you'd want to do is do a couple things here. You want to set up the VOR. Um, so let's go ahead first. Let's unpause it. Pretend like we're flying. Um, Typically, you'd be on a flight plan, so you'd be better set up there. But let's go ahead and, um, you know, there's a couple ways to do this. Let's see if this will work. If I go to Talkeetna and put in TKA there, let's see if we can use this GPS as a um, DME. And then we're going to use our primary GPS, the 650 here, as a um, yeah. See, this one doesn't seem to want to work. Okay, so we are going to use. We're gonna. We're, there's a couple ways to do this. You would set up as a guidance. You could hit proc approach and uh, put in Talkeetna as the airport that you're going to shoot the approach. Even though you're doing a VOR approach, you can set it up with vectors to Erto as a guidance, a GPS guidance, so you can see it visually on the map here um, versus um, you know just the DME. So technically, we're going to do it with the DME, so that's one way to do it. We're going to go ahead and go direct to the VOR. Imagine we're just going to do this properly as a full-on VOR approach without the GPS guidance. So here we are. We should 
be intersecting per the approach the 156 radial so let's go ahead and put 156 on the tail that'll put us on the radial and to the VOR so I'm gonna go ahead and 116.2 one, 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 is the frequency for the VOR approach put that in and set that up for navigate navigation so it's a little bit to our left there so let's go ahead and start turning and intercepting the 156 radial we're 20 22 miles out so we've got a little bit of time to set up here we need to be 14 miles DME in order to get the um, the arc now this is working showing our distance from Talkeetna there so that's great so I could theoretically put this as the as the approach and you can kind of see it it, it is set up there a little bit even though I've got it straight to Talkeetna VOR it kept it so we're re-intercepting that uh, radial per the approach plate all right once we get re-intercepted and fly the one uh, three five uh, sorry the one five six radial inbound <coughs> Which would be a three three nine. Basically, once we intercept it here, so we're trying to get to Erto using just the, the VOR, not the GPS. Even though there's a magenta line there, we're actually um, intercepting this radial that uh, you can see in the gray line over there. So once that's intercepted, and that should be sent in one five six actually would be around there. There you go. That is right. So three four. There you go, right there. So now we're gonna fly that heading. We need to be at twenty five hundred feet or above. So I'm gonna just climb up just a touch just to be accurate there. And we're gonna go ahead and do our red, white, and blues. Um, that's just a acronym I use to remind myself of all the things I need to do when I'm getting ready to shoot an approach. So R for red, white, W, B, brief, uh, B, uh, blues. So R, radio and navigation. So I want to make sure all my radios and frequencies and any uh, radio navigation that I'm using, whether it's the GPS or the um, VOR or the ILS, is all set up appropriately with the right frequencies. So let me get to 2,500 feet. We've got about three miles to do all this. So radios. So we're going to make sure we have our AWOS set and get our, our um, frequencies set as well as Talkeetna, um, Talkeetna radio, which was 123.6. And you can cheat and use, well not cheat, but you can use the, the approach plate to help you out with all these frequencies because it's all there so you would set up the frequencies and get the weather as well and so we're gonna skip that we're gonna pretend like I put that all in the COM1 setup standby and active and so we're gonna go ahead and get the weather and right here on the frequency weather would be on 35.2 so I'd set that up listen into weather and get the ATIS and then I'm gonna brief the approach so I start off on the top right VOR runway 1 into Talkeetna so I've got the right approach plate up and it's valid on the left hand side here till January 27th of 2022 so it's good to go I've got the VOR frequency on the top set up and our touchdown zone elevation is 363 we're gonna fly to Erto arc on the 14 DME at 2500 feet arc in to the 352 uh, heading inbound or 172 radial inbound all the way to his low 3.9 dme out down to the vor from the vor to the runway and as we're approaching 14.7 we're going to start our heading to 250 to do the arc so 90 degrees to the left about half a mile or 0.7 miles if you're going faster than 100 uh, knots we're oh, we've got full power here let's pull it back a bit so 250 heading we're on the 14 dme that's 90 degrees on this uh, heading right here we're turning left first and then right right so I'm going to twist this to the right 10 degrees and my next heading of right once I get the wings level which would be about 260 give or take I'm just going to leave it right at that let it you know, 
at point three. I started a little late as that centers in. We're going to um, wait for it to center in and turn uh, turn right again. And remember, I want to intercept based off the approach plate, the one seven two radial. So right now we're uh, you know intercepting the one six six radial, give or take. So we're just letting that do that. And then the next 10 degrees, we'll twist that, and that's the next radial that we're going to turn inbound and the 352 heading in. So what we're doing here is arcing in, and then we're going to intercept that 172 radial, which is a heading of, we're going to turn right to a heading of 352. So right here, we're going to go ahead and twist this to turn the OBS to the right, because we're turning right now to the 352, which is the 172. Uh, 172 radial so we're gonna go ahead and start our um, slight right turn here and as it centers in we can intercept the 352 heading so right about here past the halfway point of the needle we can start our right hand turn standard rate to 352 and we should intercept that inbound course to the VOR. Three, five, two. So right here I'm scanning my heading, my altitude, and my navigation, my power as well to set it up right. So we're gonna we're gonna start our descent down to two thousand. We're intercepted now, so I'm gonna go ahead and start my slow descent. I've got about 10 miles to go to Hislo. It's at the 3.9 DME, so 9 miles to go, sorry. Uh, 9 miles to go to the Hislo mark, so I'll go at 300 feet per minute. That should take our time to get to 2,000 feet. In fact, I could even afford to go at 200 feet per minute and keep my power up to about 2,200 RPM. So now my... Um, my scan is really going through heading, altitude, and navigation and then verifying power heading altitude navigation power and then once in a while i'm scanning these two just to make sure i'm not turning by mistake or pitching up or pitching down so i'm just kind of verifying kind of this sort of flow from the heading indicator um, to the altimeter to my obs and my power setting making sure my power setting is correct then verifying real quick with attitude and power, and then back down to heading. So that's my scan. It's a little bit, you know, not quite the traditional, but that's just the way I like to do it. That's personal. Um, so we're coming up to 2,000. We've got plenty of um, time to go before we get to our um, his low mark, which is 3.9 DME. So we're right on this 352 heading. We're going to get to his low. And remember, at his low, we can be at 2500. We're descending down to 2000 at his low, then descending down to the VOR, then descending past the VOR to the 1.2 miles away from the VOR. That's going to be our missed approach. But we can get down to 1040. Hopefully, we'll see the airport before then and um, make our uh, missed approach if we need to or not. I, I would have all the frequencies set on 26.3. I'd make my call that I'm established on the final approach course with um, center. Center will probably hand me over to Talkina Radio. I'll just say Talkina Radio. So that's the 172 Sierra Papas established on the VOR runway one approach, 10 miles um, to the south. Inbound for landing. So just checking my course, I'm a little to the left of the course, so let's turn a little bit to the right, just to re-intercept it and not drag away. I'm at 2,000 feet, so I'm going to hold my altitude here, and at 2,000 feet, I'm just waiting till this DME tells me I am 3.9 miles away from the Takina VOR.
So everything's looking good. Just verifying everything. Everything looks good. Got a few miles to go, so I'm trying to think ahead. All right, I've already made my call. I talked to people. Um, do I need? I, I can use the same acronyms or, or saying that I would use for a, a VOR um, a hold. Turn time twist throttle talk. Do I need to turn? Nope, I'm good. I'm on course. Do I need a timer? Nope, I'm on a GME approach. Throttle twist. Do I twist anything? Everything's twisted correctly with respect to my VOR. Throttle is set. Um, and then talk. I've already talked to my um, the person I need to talk to, so I'm good there. Then I'm, I'm going to try and think. Okay, what's coming up next? My next is my final approach fix, which will be his low. Once I'm at his low, the 3.9 DME, I'm going to do my uh, you know my gumps check, which is my final approach check. So uh, carb C gumps is really what I'd use. Carburetor, gas, undercarriage mixture, pumps, props, seat belts, and switches. Just make sure I do that flow. Uh, as my final approach checklist and then um, at the final approach fix I also use the uh, the saying clicks over the fix so I like to click all uh, you know make sure the lights are on as I come into an uncontrolled airport so I'll click seven times just to make sure that it's bright so that if it's it is IFR I can actually hopefully see the runway lights and continue my approach in so we're approaching, we're less than a mile away from his low, so 3.9 DME is my target DME. I'm starting to drift a little bit out, of course, so let's just start that right-hand turn a little bit and re-intercept the center line of the VOR. And as I get to his low, I can go ahead and start my gumps, because I've got a right about 0.1 miles, so gas, undercarriage, mixture, pumps, props, switches, seat belts, all good to go. All right. Past his low, past the 3.9, I can start my descent. So I've got um, about 5.1 miles to go per the chart. If you look at the chart here, we got five miles to go from his low to, to tuck the missed approach point. 3.3 now to the VOR. So everything's looking good. We're on track. I'm descending down to 1,000 feet. And you kind of want to get down about at least a mile or two from the runway so you have enough time to make a normal approach in and hopefully see the runway well beforehand um, before you get to you know uh, as you get to minimum so it's not a precision approach you don't have a glide slope so you can descend down appropriately to your minimums which will be a thousand feet so in this case I'm descending at 500 feet per minute 600 feet per minute might be appropriate too I can pull the power back just a bit more to you know anywhere between 1700 to 2000 rpm at this point sometimes i put one notch of flaps depending on the scenario or the airplane that i'm flying um, so that i can get to about 90 to 100 knots right that's my approach speed that i should be flying is 90 knots for that category a so i'm at 90 that's looking good power setting i could put a little bit more power there all right about there is looking good 300, uh, 200 feet to go because I'll level off at 1100. Oh, there you go. We've got the runway environment in sight. So we're good there. Um, but we're just about two miles away from the runway. So here's where we would see the run, the, the flag starting to flip or the, the CDI needle starting to get up out of hand and it's going to flip to from. And I know I'm crossing the VOR. I'd hold my altitude here at 1100 feet. If I didn't see the airport in sight, I'd still continue on this. This should flip to from. At this point, I'd add a little bit of power just to hold my heading, uh, hold my altitude, excuse me, and airspeed so I don't get too slow. And I'm constantly trying to look for the airport, trying to look for the airport. You know, right about where I cross the VOR, if I don't see the airport, once it says from, if I don't see the airport in an actual condition, I know that's about 1.2 miles per the approach plate, 1.2 miles away from the runway. It'd be not so easy to shoot to land normally at this point. I'd really have to dive it in. So really at the VOR, I'll be planning, planning to go missed. Um, not that I want to go missed, but you know, at that point, it's it's not a normal ascent. So right here, one mile to go. 1.2 is when I go missed. So one, 
And then if I didn't see the runway yet at this point, I would go missed. So 1.1, 1 1.2. 1 so I'd go straight out to 2100 feet. So at this point I'd add power, uh, remove the flaps, positive rate of climb, and climb up to 2100 feet per the missed approach. So climb 2100 feet on the 352 radial. So I've got 352 radial set. I can go a little to the left there. I was a little off course. And climbing to 2100 feet. Once I get to 2100 feet, I'll do a left turn to 3200 feet and direct to the Talkeetna VOR. So I'm just going to go ahead and just climb till I get to 2100 feet. And then at that point, um, I'll decide, okay, yep, I'm going to climb, climb to 21. Once I get to 2100 feet, left turn, climbing left turn to 32. So I'll just keep the climb going. And then this is when, that's when I would twist the OBS accordingly to the VOR. So I thought I would be going to the VOR. right here and even the GPS these 650s are awesome because they do give you some uh, good markers here so 2100 feet is where you need to be at and then you can start your left hand turn so we're coming up to it and now we're going to continue the climb so I'm just going to keep watching my climb rate and start my turn to the VOR so I know it should be around to the south so let's go ahead and tune it to the VOR and it should be around south right there so southbound will take me to the VOR but I'm still turning so it's probably going to be um, realistically probably 160 um, give or take heading to the big lake VOR maybe 150 at this point just keeping that standard rate turn twisting to 150 probably up to 3200 feet once I'm at the 3200 feet it says to hold on the big lake VOR and you're gonna hold on the 352 heading into the big lake VOR so what type of approach will uh, what what you know entry will that be you know, if we're going to the big lake VOR we're holding on the 352 inbound which is the 172 radial so remember that's the 172 radial so if we look at this okay so first of all let's go ahead and maybe I should be flying the one I was right the first time around 160 oops and 3200 feet at or about 3200 feet so we'll hold it at 33 for the time being while I get set up 172 so right it's right there so it's right on the entry of a really a parallel makes the most sense it's right on the line where it'd be a parallel entry for a 172 heading so what i'm going to do is fly the hold so I'm flying the hold right now i'm getting to the big lake vor i'm 2.4 miles away from the big lake vor And since it's a parallel entry, and it is, if you look at the chart, it's left-hand turns, actually. So it's actually on the TPD. It's on the P side. That's why it's a parallel entry, because it's left-hand turns. So it's left-hand turns on the hold. So one more time, we're going to look at the chart on the on four flight. It's left-hand turns. So it's toilet paper, TPD. So it's on the P side still. So we'll fly that heading, that 172 heading, when I get to the VR, which I am. I'm 0.7 miles away, so I'm going to start my turn to 172 and fly 172. Since it's left-hand turns around the VOR, my re-entry into the VOR hold is going to be a right-hand turn. Now I'm going to do a right-hand turn. And I'm going to add about 45 degrees to that um, re-entry uh, turn. 
So I'm going to want to fly 352 on the inbound course. So if I add 45 degrees to that, that's going to be really a zero, let's say 040 heading to re-intercept it. So I'm going to fly one minute outbound. So I would have started my timer and fly one minute outbound. Turn time twist throttle talk, right? So let's go ahead and reduce the power because I'm at altitude. I'm going to turn soon. So I'm going to turn to a heading of 040, right? So I'm going to look at that. I turn right and continue that right hand turn and add it, you know, if I'm doing a, a 180 right hand turn, but adding 40 to that turn, I'm going to be roughly around that 030, 040 heading. So let's say that's a minute. So I'm going to turn right to 040. And you can get, you can be a little bit more aggressive too and, and turn right to 050 for all that matters. That's just going to be a little bit faster on the re entry to it. So turn, time, twist. So we're going to twist this to the inbound course we want to fly inbound on the 352 352 heading so that's what we're re-intercepting and we're continuing that turn to um, that zero four zero till this center so we're going to go keep turning right to this side zero four zero that's where the needle is pointing to so i want to go zero four zero and re-intercept that course um, to, and then turn left again to 352. So we're going to go turn, go into that, so re-intercept that course is what we're doing. So that's why it's an aggressive, more aggressive turn. Remember, we're doing a parallel entry, left-hand hold turns. So we're going to re-enter with a right-hand turn and go a little bit more aggressive on the right-hand turn. So we're going to add 40 degrees to the inbound course, which would be 356 in this case, or 352, sorry. We're going to keep that 040 heading. As the needle starts coming in, we're going to go back to that inbound heading of 352. So it should be coming in right about... Right now it's coming in, so 352. See, that came in pretty quick um, just because I didn't do a one whole minute outbound. So as that comes in, we're now just going to hold 352, wait for the flag to flip from to to from. So once that goes from, there you go. We can start our turn to our heading outbound course of 172 per the approach plate so 172 turn time twist throttle talk so turn we're turning we'll start the time once our wings are level or we're a beam rvor so once that turns back to a two And just to help visualize that, there you go. That's what it looks like. So we are approaching the 172 heading, waiting for this to flip the flag, level the wings. So the wings are leveling here. And it flipped, so start the timer. One minute outbound, and then a left hand turn to 352. And correct as needed for wind or anything along those lines. Obviously, you can use your GPS as a guidance, and that's kind of what I'm doing, just so you can see it visually. But you know, you should be able to do this without the the, the GPS tracker um, just by looking at the process of, of this VOR um, hold. So we're at 3200 
3300, I'm a little off. 42 seconds, so we got 15 more seconds. So I'm not gonna listen to this because it's you know obviously telling you to keep a tighter pattern, but we're gonna do the whole one minute hold outbound, one minute hold inbound. It's a turn, time, twist, throttle, throttle. So we gotta slow down the throttle just a touch again. Talk, so it you know, tell. Anchorage approach, Cessna 172 CR pop plus established on the VOR hold, missed hold. And fly the heading of 352, left hand turn, so remember left hand turns. 352, inbound. So this is a good stam, non standard hold. And now as we're turning in, this should center, this should start centering in and that will tell you whether you're on the correct um, radial or not. So as we're coming in, turn's looking good, standard rate turn, we're looking at holding 352, holding our altitude, oh, that's centering. So we're just waiting, keep on going, keep on going. We might be a little off, we might need to um, re-intercept it. So I'll add a couple more degrees um, to that turn. If I was flying it manually, I might add a little bit steeper bank, just a touch. Um, and now, once my wings are level, I'm going to restart this uh, clock. So 210, so 310 was when we should be back on course, so back on the VOR. And that would tell me if I need to adjust my outbound time uh, to make sure it's one minute inbound. All right, so as it recenters, I can start my right hand turn back to the correct heading of 352 fly that radial inbound there you go and then now we're on the hold now we should be good on that hold So 310 should be when the VOR should flip from to to from. Anything different to that, we have to add or subtract on our outbound course. So if we did this right, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's one minute. So it's how many seconds off we are? like we are about 18 seconds too far on the outbound course so as we turn out to the left we're not going to do a whole minute we're going to only do um, 42 seconds outbound so that's all dependent on your speed your tailwind all these different things play a role um, I was adjusting my throttle a bunch there because I thought I was you know, set already, but I guess I wasn't. All those things play a role. So you just want to make sure you've got the right throttle setting, right speed, constant speed, and then you're adjusting for you know ground speed as well. So that's why we do our one minute outbound, one minute inbound as well. So that's the full Talkeetna VOR 